Good evening. We'd like to welcome you back to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. If you don't have a church to attend or you're looking for a church to attend, we'd love to invite you to come and be with us in any and all of our services. Our Sunday morning services start at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school, then preaching. Sunday nights at 6, Wednesday nights at 7. We're located at 1233 Collins Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. And we also have an FM transmitter for those that are sick or unable to come inside out of their vehicles. Uh, we've got an FM transmitter for them to listen out in the parking lot at the church, the 92.9 FM, and it's just as clear out there as it is in here. And uh, they can hear the services and still get in on the services. And we do have people that, that do that. And we tell them, we're praying for them, that they'll get well enough to where they can get back inside with us because we sure do miss them being inside with us. So we thank God for that. And the Lord's blessed us to be able to even do that. It's amazing to my mind, the technology, how all that works. But I, hey, I can't explain all how it works, but thank God I'm just, I'm, I'm glad it works. I'm glad it works. We want to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. This is our Wednesday night Facebook service. We don't do this live. It's pre-recorded, but uh, this is our Wednesday night Facebook service for the shut-in and for those maybe having to work and not able to attend church on Wednesday nights. And do you notice what I said? Not able to attend on Wednesday nights. Maybe, maybe physically or something's come up that you absolutely can't. I'm glad that we can have this. We will, Lord willing, be having our service at the church um, here at seven tonight, seven tonight. But we have this, and maybe, you know, you could be viewing this anytime. It may not be on Wednesday night at six o'clock. It may be on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, whenever, uh, during the day, in the middle of the night. But I, I would like to say thank you for viewing, and I hope this uh, service today would be a blessing to you. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. If you would please pray with us and pray for us. Father, thank you for the privilege to have this uh, video this evening. I hope it's a blessing to those that are viewing. Lord, I pray if there be anybody listening that don't know Christ as their Savior, that they'd be convicted in their heart and show them that they need the Lord, that you do that. And I pray they'll call on you before it's too late. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray for the sick and the shut-in. God, that you'd just be with those. Thank you for those that are viewing. I pray you'd help them, help me to be a blessing to them. I pray you'd bless the songs, bless the word of God, and uh, everything is said and done. Bless all the services tonight where the word of God's preached and uh, use every man of God as he stands to proclaim truth. And help us right now. We'll try to give you glory and honor for what's accomplished. We love you, Lord. Thank you for being so good. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we're going to take the old red back church hymnal. You might have a green back church hymnal. We're going to take the old red back church hymnal and we're going to, Lord willing, as a congregation, we want to do one called the old rugged cross, page 305 in the red church hymnal. And uh, I love this old hymn. There used to be a lady at an assisted living home I, I go to up in Hillsville, Virginia. And uh, she was right much shorter than me. And she'd She'd get right up close to me. She'd stick her finger up in my face and she'd say, Preacher, I was raised on that old rugged cross. And I inquired about that. She'd tell me that about every time she'd see me. And uh, she said, my, my family, my mom and dad and my family, we'd all sit out on the front porch and sing songs uh, way back in the day, amen, when she was a little girl. And she said, I remember singing that old rugged cross. I was raised on it. And I said, what a blessing. And I tell you one thing, it is a blessing. And sing this whole song with us, if you would, as a congregational this evening. Then we may do one more for you. We'll just see how our time goes. But sing along, if you would, on the old rugged cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was saved. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. glory above to bear it to dark Calvary so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till 
my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown in the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday or a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true in shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share so I'll share trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown oh what a blessing every time I get to that fourth verse I think about Lord help me to do that what to be true to the old rugged cross. It says, to the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. It's shame and reproach. Gladly bear. Gladly bear. Amen. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away where it's glory forever I'll share. What a blessing. What a blessing. Well, I want to do one that uh, Lord reminded me of recently. Hadn't done it a whole lot. And I don't think I've done it on these Wednesday night services. And uh, it's called In the Garden. And it speaks of spending time in fellowship with the Lord. Spending time in fellowship with the Lord. And how sweet it is to fellowship with the Lord. I'm about to uh, tell my age here, but I think, was it not maybe Jackie Gleason? Was it Jackie Gleason that used to say how sweet it is? I could be wrong on that. <laughs> but uh, how sweet it is, thank God, to know Jesus as your Savior. And then to fellowship with him. That's what this song is talking about. And if you listen to the message in it, I think you'll see that. It's just a wonderful, wonderful song. And hope it'll be a blessing to you today. If you'd like to be turning in that good old authorized King James Bible, turn to the book of Luke, chapter number 2. Luke, chapter number 2. And we'll get into the Word of God here in just a minute. But... We're going to try to do this one here first for you. Called In the Garden. Hope it'll be a help to you. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Falling on my ear The Son of God disclosed heart is ringing 
And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be me, but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks time that we can fellowship with the Lord. The Lord sure has been good. I've enjoyed our time together this evening or whenever you're viewing and it's time to get into the word of God. The book of Luke chapter number two. We left off about verse number 10. We'll pick up along about verse number 10 verse number 11 this evening. Luke chapter two. If you get around verse number 11 somewhere around in there that'll be about where we're going to be at. And I hope and pray that uh, you'll pray for us. Hope the songs were a help to you today or tonight and uh, today, whenever you're viewing, but uh, this evening. And we're going to look in Luke chapter number two. Uh, we left off, I think we mentioned verse number 10. And uh, being as this, just we got through three verses, I think, last Wednesday night. I want us to look at those three, read them, and get ourselves in the right frame of mind as far as the context of what we're going to look at today. Luke chapter 2, let's back up to verse number 8 and see what it says. Father, help us this evening. I need your help. Thank you for the sweet spirit of God I feel. Help us to do your will in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter 2, verse number 8, the Bible says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, take a look at it, amen. For behold, I bring you good tidings. We talked about that last Sunday morning. I bring you, or last Wednesday night, excuse me. Good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Good news that brings great joy. Thank God it's offered to everybody. Now, verse number 11 says, For unto you. Why well, I like this. It's not just for all people, it's for you. Listen, Jesus died not just for all people, but thank God he died for you. He died for me. What a blessing that is. See, it's offered to whosoever, but praise God, it's, it's for me. He did that for me. The Bible says, verse 11, for unto you, talking specifically to the shepherds, but hey, thank God for the word of God. For unto you is born this day. In other words, he was born today. In the city of David, he gives them where Christ was born. We read about that in verses 1 through 8 of Luke chapter 2. For, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Why well, like that? Which is Christ the Lord. I mean, the angel leaves nothing to the imagination of who this might be. He tells the shepherds exactly who it is. Thank God it's a, it's a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The Savior, thank God. It says a Savior, but he's talking about who that Savior is, Christ the Lord. He's the long-awaited Messiah. He was born this day, he told the shepherds, the angel did, this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Listen, not just one that could rescue, but thank God one that can save as in forgive sin. Praise the Lord for that, amen. The one that came to die and give his life for whosoever. 
For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And then the angel tells the shepherds, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe. I like that. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So the angel tells the shepherds, the Savior's been born this day. Not only that, he says, he's in the city of David. That's Bethlehem. Here's a sign. You're going to find that babe. That's saying you need to go look for him. You're going to find that babe. He's going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. So he's in Bethlehem. It's the Savior. He's in Bethlehem. We're going to find him wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger, lying in a manger, which would be in a stable of some type. So they're getting specific instructions of who's been born, where he's been born, how they're going to find him. So they need to go look for him, right? And they're going to do that, praise God. And then after this announcement is made by the angel, the Bible says, and suddenly, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude. <laughs> I don't know how many, but a whole bunch, amen. And suddenly there was with the angel, verse 13 says, a multitude of the heavenly host. Who's that? That's the angels. The angels. A multitude of the heavenly host, what were they doing? They were praising God at the announcement that Christ had been born. Now, let me just say this, and I'll try to move on. A lot of folks would say, I don't think we need to celebrate the birth of the Lord. Well, can I, can I remind us of something this evening? Thank God a multitude of the host in heaven were praising God at the announcement of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only were they praising God, the Bible says, and they were saying, verse 14 tells us what they said, they were praising God by saying this, glory to God in the highest. They were bragging on God for what he had done. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill toward men. Now I'm going to stop with that verse. I'm not done, but I'm going to stop with that verse and I want us to think about what the angels, the multitude of the heavenly host, said. What did they say, preacher? Well, they said, glory to God. And I'm telling you what, we ought to praise God for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know folk that used to praise God, you can't even get a grunt out of them no more. Amen? I know folk that used to praise God, and they are teetotally scared to death, and act like God ain't on his throne no more. Can I tell you something I shared with the church a couple of Sunday nights ago? And I'm not trying to be a smart aleck like I said earlier. I, I really am not. But I'm just telling you like it is. Think about this. A lot of people, I'm talking about professing Christians, they act like that COVID is way up here, way up here. You can't even see my hand in the screen now. They act like COVID's way up here and God is way down here to the floor. They act like COVID's way more powerful than God. Can I tell you something this evening? God is way up here, way higher than I could ever reach. And COVID's way down there. Amen, way down there. What do you mean, preacher? I'm saying the God that we serve is way greater than any problem you and I could ever have. Thank God for it. Now, what did the angel say about it? What did the multitude say? Glory to God. They were praising God. Man, I tell you what. We don't need to let nothing knock the shout out of us. Amen. You say, preacher, I ain't never shouted. Well, praise God. Y'all try it sometime. Amen. It's, I mean, if you get excited about the Lord, feel his blessings, it ain't going to hurt you. Amen. To holler amen. You know what amen means? Amen. If you holler amen in a service, what that means is you agree with what's being said. Or so be it. I agree with that. Hey, if a preacher is preaching the word of God, I can say amen to it. I can say amen to it. Well, here's the message. Glory to God in the highest. That's what they were praising God. And they were saying, and on earth, listen to this, on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. You know what this is saying? This is saying that the reason Christ came, the reason Christ was born he came on a goodwill mission. 
He came on a goodwill mission. He came to bring peace. People just get saved with the grace of God. Peace, goodwill, what? Toward men, toward men. He came for men, women, boys, and girls. And he wants them to be saved. And if you're not saved today, he wants you to be saved. He wants you to know him as your savior. He's very, his very reason for coming to this world was because he loves you and wants to save you. Can I say something this evening? I'm going to with the help of the Lord. He wants to save you out of your sins. In other words, yes, you're in them. I was in them, but he wants to, he wants to make a brand new creature out of you. Can I tell you something? Listen to this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17, one of my favorite verses says, Therefore, if any man, now speaking of man, woman, boy, or girl, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Do you hear that? A new creature. Behold, all things are, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. Are made new. Continually working on us. He's still working on me. Now he saved me. I'm not working my way to heaven. He saved me 40 years ago when I asked the Lord to save me. But thank God. He's still working on me and he's still working on you. And I hope and pray that the, the Lord's helped you today. I want to be a help to you. That's why we do these videos. Uh, I, I, want to, I want to try to reach people that I normally can't reach. It's just what the Lord's laid on my heart to do. I want to reach our folk that are not able to come to church. Those that are able to where they can view. Some can't, some can. But you may be viewing and not even in our area. Matter of fact, I, I'm right now in the Asbury section of Westfield, North Carolina. And, uh, you know, I, I may be reaching somebody through this video with the help of the Lord in the other side of the United States. I may be, you may be viewing this from some other country across the Atlantic Ocean or across the Pacific Ocean. I don't know. But whoever you are, can I tell you something? You're important and God wants to save you and forgive you of your sins and change your life. And he wants to do that for people right here in the Asbury section of Westfield, North Carolina, or wherever you're at. I hope this has been a help to you this evening. I've enjoyed being with you on this Wednesday evening Facebook service. Listen, pray for our service coming up at seven here in just a little while, and it's a church, and our folk will be gathering in. We'll look forward to that. And until next week, we'd like to say we love you in the Lord. Thank you for viewing, and God bless you is my prayer.